Welcome to 321 Exams. Today, we'll be looking at economics, and our topic for today is financial institutions. Financial institutions. Now, according to the syllabus, what are the performance objectives of this topic? Number one is to identify the types and functions of financial institutions. Number two, number two, explain the rules of financial institutions in economic development. So what are the rules of um, the financial institution towards economic development, specifically we are going to look at Nigeria, we should distinguish between the money market and the capital market. Then we are going to identify the various financial sectors regulations and also their functions. Then we explain the money creation and process and also its what challenges of money creation. Then we are going to explain the various monetary policy instruments and also their effect. Then we are going to appraise the challenges facing the financial institutions in Nigeria. So first, let's start with the meaning of financial institutions. So what exactly do you actually refer to as what? Financial institution. Now, financial institution, now these are organizations. These are organizations. Financial institutions are organizations are organizations which deals primarily in money, which deals, which deals primarily, which deals primarily in money, which deals primarily in money, which deals primarily in money. Now, they constitute the financial framework of an economy. They constitute they constitute the financial framework of an economy. They constitute the financial framework of an economy. And also, financial institutions help to pool savings and excess liquidities. Financial institutions, financial institutions, helps to pool savings and excess liquidity. Helps to pool savings and excess liquidity from individuals, from individuals within the country, from individuals, from individuals and firms, and firms within the country, within the country, and make them available, and make them available to those who require them. So in this regard, we've been able to look at what exactly do we refer to as financial institutions. So naturally, financial institutions deals primarily with money. Deals primarily with money. Now, when I said they constitute the financial framework of an economy, why do we say they constitute the financial framework of an economy? Because the financial institution itself um, organizes the financial sector, or organizes the financial framework of the economy, and they also pull funds from a place where fund is of excess to a place where funds are actually needed. Because the, it is a pool of fund in the real picture whereby excess liquidity is taken from the sector where there is excess money to sectors that require those money or to sectors that do not actually have those money. So this gives us a small breakdown of what exactly we refer to as what the financial institutions. Now we have to look at what the types of financial institutions. Now the first one we have to look at is the traditional financial institutions. Number two, we have to look at the central bank. Number three, which are non-traditional, we're going to look at the mortgage bank. Number four, number four, we have to look at the merchant bank, the merchant bank. Number five, the merchant bank, number five, we have to look at the insurance company, number six, we have to look at the building societies, the building societies. So these are the financial 
um, types of financial institutions we have to look at. So financial institutions, we have the traditional financial institutions and we also have the non-traditional financial institutions. What do we refer to as the traditional institutions? That's the first thing we have to look at, the traditional institutions or traditional, the traditional financial institution the traditional financial institution. So that's the first thing we are uh, to look into. Now, most times the traditional financial institutions exist in West Africa. Now, traditional financial institutions exist in West Africa and they come in different ways. They come in different, um, different ways. So let's start with the first one. Now, these, these are organizations these are organizations, these are organizations that pools funds together. These are organizations that pools funds together. These are organizations that pools funds together, especially in the traditional settings. I will now. In most cases, we call them the Osusu, or some people call the Isusu, whichever you decide to call it. Now, why do we call them the Osusu? Now, they exist primarily for financial um, activities, but majorly in traditional setting. Now, they can exist as the credit treat society. They can exist as what? The credit um, treat society. Now, what does the credit thrift society do? In most cases, they pull funds together. They form like a cooperative by pulling their funds together. And in most cases, the funds are given to members of those society without collateral security. Now, which means that what? They also use this method to form the habit of savings. They also use this method I will them, to form the habit of what? savings. So in the traditional financial institutions, you will discover that in some cases, most of them, they call them the Osusu. Why they come there with the Osusu? Because most times they can pull funds together. Once they pull funds together, they save it. And as I said, they can also form the, the concept of what? They form the habit of what? Savings. Whereby the money they've actually saved is being given to their members, in most cases, without collateral security. Now, Another way the traditional financial institution also exists is that this also deals with members who actually save money together. Why do they save money together? They save money together for the purpose of giving loans to members of the public or to encourage their members to form the habit of what? Savings. So in this regard, the traditional financial institutions could naturally exist. Now we now have the, the central bank. The central bank. The central bank is the apex bank. We call it the apex because it's the highest. Um, 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 it is the apex bank in every country. Every country has their own um, um, central bank. So in this regard, what does the syllabus ask us to look at? Majorly the functions of central bank. But before we go to the functions of central bank, let's understand some things about the central bank. Now, firstly, the central bank. The central bank was established was established in Nigeria was established in Nigeria by the was established in Nigeria by the central bank act of 1958 by the Central Bank of 1958. Now the Central Bank, the Central Bank commenced business, commenced business on July 11, 1959. The Central Bank commenced business on July 11, 1959 with an initial capital with an initial capital of three million. Now, with an initial capital of three million. Now, this first explains 
the little origin of central bank. Note, the central bank is the apex bank in Nigeria. Now, why do I have to give this um, little introduction? Because the examiners can naturally ask questions in this regard. So the Central Bank was established by the Central Bank Act of 1958, so which means 1958. Now the Central Bank commenced business on July 11, 1959. So which means two things you must take into consideration. The Act established the Central Bank in 1958, but actually they commenced business one year later, which is in 1959. They can ask you what was the capital base of the central bank when it was being established. The capital base of the central bank when it was established is 3 million Naira at that particular point in time. So this has buttressed just three major points. Number one, what, uh, what is the act that explains or that, um, that established the, the central bank, which is the central bank, which is the word central bank act of what, 1958, and it's commenced business July 11, 1959. And the capital base of the central bank was what? Three million as at the point when it is being what? Established. So let's quickly look at the, the features of the central bank. The features of the central bank. Number one, CBN, the central bank of Nigeria is formed by the act of parliament. That's the first point. It's formed by the act of parliament. And that act is the what? Act of what? 1958. The central bank of Ninth act of 1958. Then which is, it has a legal backing of the country. It is not illegal. It is owned and managed by the government. So private individuals cannot run the Central Bank of Nigeria. Central Bank is owned, is managed, is financed, is directed by the government. And that's why the government is the person that um, um, appoints the, the Central Bank um, governor. It is one throughout a country. You cannot have two Central Bank in a country. Central Bank is just one throughout the, the country is one throughout the country. Then lastly, it is a non-profit oriented financial institution. So which means the central bank is not established for the purpose of making profit. That's the first point. So they are not profit oriented. They are not profit oriented. So which means the central bank is not established for the purpose of making profit. So let's look at the functions of central bank. The functions of central bank. Number one, the, the central bank issues currency and um, distributes it throughout the country. Currency issue and distribution throughout the country. So it is the duty of the central bank to actually issue what currency throughout the country. It is the issue of the, it is the, it is the duty or the function of the central bank to distribute currency, which are the Naira notes, the coins, and every other legal tender throughout the, the country. Number two, the central bank serves as the bank to other banks. Now, why do we say they serve as the bank to other banks? You will discover that what? We also have so many commercial banks in the country. Now, these commercial banks we have in the country also need a bank they can actually lean on, or which serves as their own monetary bank. So, which means the central bank serves as the monetary bank to other commercial banks to, or to other banks which are profit oriented in nature. But that is why we say central bank serves as what? Bank to other banks. So, other banks keep their money with the central bank. Why individuals cannot keep money with central bank? Individuals can only keep money to, with what? Commercial bank. Now, it advises the government on monetary matters. Don't, don't forget that the central bank itself is that um, in, um, um, authority that is involved in managing what we refer to as the what? The monetary policies. The monetary policies. They manage the what? The monetary policies. And they also manage the instrument of monetary policies. The what? The instrument. The instrument of what? Monetary policy. So that's the duty of the central bank. So it advises the government on monetary matters Apart from advising the government on monetary matters, they also manage the monetary instrument and also make monetary policies. Then number four, it manages the foreign exchange of the country. It is the duty of the central bank to manage the foreign exchange of the country. So when we talk about what foreign exchange, we're talking about what? The relationship with, with our currency, with other foreign currencies of the world. What's the relationship, uh, what is the exchange rate between the... Um, the Naira and the pounds, the Naira and the dollar, 
and other foreign currencies. So who does that is the central bank of um, Nigeria. Number one. Or number five, 